Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to Bookmas Day 12. I cannot believe this is the last Bookmas video. It is kind of crazy. I am filming the day of the 12th and so it is coming a little bit later today, but I'm still excited. Today's video is what I really enjoy watching during this time of year and that is the end of the year book tag. I get inspiration from three creators. I kind of think it's a compilation of all of their questions. I think Destiny is the one that like created it and then I saw Larry's video and then I saw Madison Kate's video. So I'll have all three of their videos linked down below so you guys can watch theirs. But yeah, I think I have like 20 some questions to go through so I feel like we should start that way we're not here forever. First question and it's starting out with a banger is most disappointing read of the year and I just have to say it, it's House of Flame and Shadow by Sarah J Mass. I was expecting so much I don't know. I don't really know what I was expecting, but I felt kind of let down by this. And I feel like I'm not the only one that feel, felt like that. I feel like a lot of people were disappointed. Two of my closest friends, Ashley and Major, and I, we talk about this series a lot. We were hyping it up so much and then we read it and we were all just kind of like... I actually don't even think Major's read it yet now that I'm thinking about it. But definitely did not live up to the hype that was surrounding it. And I'm intrigued to see what Sarah J Mass will produce next because this was not for me really it was still like four stars don't get me wrong it was a good book or maybe even a, it was a three stars but it just it didn't hit the same as her other ones the next question is underdog book of the year and i have to say the fifth season by nk jemison this book came out a while ago i actually am not sure when it came out i think like 2016 2018 sometime around then and this is actually part of a trilogy and it is a fantasy slash sci-fi um story and i think it's really good i've only read the first one the fifth season and i thought it was so good i've never heard anyone talk about it and i probably wouldn't have read it just because i didn't know anything about it until i had to read it for class and i'm so so grateful that my professor assigned this because it was so beautiful like actually one of the best books i think the best book that i've ever been assigned to in class and it's just it's everything that you want in a fantasy but it's also a little dystopian. It's, it's such a good book and I can't recommend it enough. Next is a book you loved in the moment but don't think about now. And as I was going through my reading challenge, I thought about Swift and Saddled by Lila Sage. I didn't like absolutely like obsess over this book, but I did really, really like it. It was a four star book. I loved it. I loved the, the romance, the cowboy romance. And then I genuinely have not thought about this book. Like if you had told me I read it last year, I would believe you. Because I just do not think about this book or these characters at all. I could not even name them. Next we have fave couples of the year and I picked two book couples. I have a lot of favorite book couples but these two have been on my mind recently as you guys will hear as I answer the other questions. But I have Rhodes and Aurora. His actual name is Tobias but Rhodes and Aurora from All Roads Lead Here. And then I also have Aiden and Vanessa from The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. And yes, these are both Mariana Zapata books. And guys, we're going to get to it later. Her name's going to come up later. I tried to do where I only mention one like book or something once, but I could not do it. Mariana Zapata is like my favorite. But anyway, moving on. Um, a book you can't stop recommending. It, it's, it has to be All Roads Lead Here by Mariana Zapata. I think that's my favorite one that I've read by her. But I also can't stop recommending Down the Drain by Julia Fox. This is my number one recommendation if people are looking for an audiobook or want to read MMR. I think her storytelling is so well. I listen to it, so that's why I would personally. Um, that's why I would personally give it as a recommendation as an audiobook, but it goes by so fast and it is quite literally the most entertaining audiobook I've ever read. Well, there's kind of another one, but I'll talk about them later. Next question is a book that surprised me, and I have to I have to go with the Dream Harbor series by Lori Gilmer. Gilmore? There's three books currently out, and I was expecting just like a really fluffy read and kind of like a palate cleanser. I know some people talk about palate cleansers, and um, and by palate cleanser, I just mean like it's a quick read. It gets me in a mood to be reading again and like I feel fresh and I can get into like a deeper book or something like that. But, and not, not saying that this book isn't those things, but I became so inve invested in this series for some reason. Like I was yearning. 
I still am yearning for the fourth and fifth book. I don't want to have to wait till March to read it because I love the vibes of this series. It's so cozy. I love all the characters. It's quite literally giving Gilmore Girls. Like it's giving Stars Hollow. Dream Harbor, Stars Hollow, you know. The next question is a new favorite author you discovered in 2024. Mariana Zapata like all right, I cannot believe it took me this long to read something from her and I'm so grateful that that one day I was at Raymond bookstore in Lawrence I picked up a copy of All Roads Lead Here because it it has changed my life I will be reading her entire backlist eventually next book question I have is happiest read of the year and this was kind of a difficult question for me but I think I'd have to also say the Dream Harbor series by Laura Mc Lori Gilmore. There is like some tension within the novel like as there is in any novel to create a plot device or to create some plot but I think specifically the second one the cinnamon bun bookstore I think this one has the least amount of conflict and I've just felt really cozy and happy vibes while reading it. Of course I mean, maybe there's other books that are happier than this, but I feel like the series as a whole is very, very happy. This is most frustrating book you read in 2024, and I have to say Tom Lake by Ann Patchett. First off, this book took me, I think, four months to finish, which is so long to read a book, especially when my average time for reading a book, I would say, is like two days, three days, and that's when I'm busy. Like, if I'm not busy, I can read a book in a day. It just depends. But to have read this book over the course of four months and like actually dreading picking up picking it up, it was definitely the most frustrating. I will say whenever I started getting into the series or the novel and actually started listening or reading, however, I, Meryl Streep narrates it, so I was mostly listening to it. But there would be points where I'd get really, really invested, but then I would set it down and I'd have to like kind of goad myself into picking it back up again. And that's really frustrating. I did like this story. It's like a solid three, three and a half star book. Um, like I would, I probably wouldn't really recommend it just because I had such a hard time, but I know some people really love it and I can understand why they love it. Question we have is longest book you read this year and it is Manacled by Sin Lin Yu. I read this book for the third time. I read it twice last year and once this year. I'm pretty sure. I know I've read it, I think I've read it three times. But yeah, this this book is like 12 or almost 1300 pages long. And so this is definitely the longest one. And I'm really excited because I think her, um, I think the like republished version of this to make it like a, a real book is coming out fall 2025 and it's going to be called Alchemized. And I'm really excited. I think that's awesome. Yeah. Anyway. I'm really excited about that. If you guys haven't read it, I think you should. I was not, I think, yeah, I'm not even going to say anything. Shortest book, of course, and that has to be a collection. I'm just, I know these are novellas and some people are like, well, those aren't really novels. Like that shouldn't answer the question, but these novellas are so short and I need to tell you about them because if you're needing to finish your TBR for this year, read these five novellas. There's five from various authors. It's under the mistletoe. They're all Christmas related like 50 pages or less honestly like it takes you 30 minutes to an hour and a half to read some of these and no they're not great but they're fun and like you're gonna giggle and you're gonna complete your 2024 tbr so read them next is a book you haven't stopped thinking about guys <laughs> it has to be all roads lead here in the wall of winnipeg and me it must it must be those i cannot stop thinking about them they were phenomenal. I'm like, I'm like, okay, I need to read more. I want to read Wait For It Now. But then I'm like, no, 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 no. I have to read all my Christmas books first. But guys, you don't understand what she's done to me. I'm a slow burn romance lover now. I didn't realize I love this slow burn, but I do. Okay, anyway, the next question is unpopular book you loved. And I feel like people might argue with me that these aren't unpopular. But I feel like in the circles that I was running in, they were both unpopular and they are both uh by Allie Hazelwood and that is Bride and then Not in Love. I think that was a publication order but Bride is a werewolf ex vampire paranormal mystery romance and I ate it up like I loved it and Not in Love is also a stim romance going back to like her roots of how she became a famous author and 
the reason people didn't like these is first they I don't think they liked Bride because it was outside of her traditional like stem related romances and then people didn't like Not In Love because it was more based on sexual tension, sexual romance, sexual relationship versus emotional or at least at first it was sex and then emotion if that makes sense. But I personally love these both and maybe I'm wrong, maybe these were not as unpopular as I feel like they were but I really feel like people did not like these and, and for me I'm just like I love Allie Hosbold, like sign me up. The highest and lowest rated books that you read this year on Goodreads, do I agree? So Manacled was actually the highest rated on Goodreads and I have to say yes, I've read it three times and that is a 1300 page book. Like it, it has to be good. And I honestly was shocked when I saw it. It was like, it was the highest that I've read this year. I'm like, what? I mean, it makes sense, but also that's crazy. Um, Cause I feel like I hear people hate on it because it's a fan fiction, but guys, it's so good. Um, yeah, so I totally agree with that. And like I said, I'm really excited for Alchemize. Whenever it comes out, I will be purchasing. This is under the Mistletoe collection. Um, actually now I'm forgetting. There was two of them that were the lowest. I know one of them was the one by Tessa Bailey and then I don't remember the other one, but they were rated the lowest and I feel like that that makes sense because they are novellas and they're pretty sexual honestly. Like they're they're like that infatuation at first sight. And I know people don't like that. And that again, that's totally fine. I can understand that. But then above those never. Is it just called never? by Jessa Hastings, the Peter Pan retelling. I think I rated it two and a half stars, so this honestly made a lot of sense to me. I love Magnolia Parks. I think like that's a five star series, but this was just weird to me and I, it felt really wrong. Like I didn't like any of the characters at all. And yeah, I, none, of, none of them were likable at all. So anyway. The next question is my favorite quotable books of the year and I really don't quote books like as I was looking at this question I was like I feel like I don't quote books really sometimes I'll make fun of them but I'm never quoting them I'm never highlighting that's just not something I do anymore and as I was thinking the only one that I could think of that like it had me laughing out loud and like joking about what the, the narrator was saying was Lights Out by Nevesa Allen and this was the audiobook that I was talking about earlier where I'm like that audiobook might be the best audiobook I've ever read. Like the actual source material might not be that good, but it is, it's a comedy. Like it's funny. If the comedy wasn't there, it would be like one star, but because it's comical, it's a, it's a four star. I think I rated it four stars. And yeah, honestly, I'd recommend this if you guys are looking for an audiobook. It's hilarious. It had me laughing out loud and I definitely shared things with people surrounding me. What is a book with the most unique concept? I really had to think about this and I, I think I have to give it to The Starling House by Alex E. Harrow. See, I didn't really like this book, but I think the concept of having this house that is like a character in itself is really, really interesting. It kind of reminds me of a monster house, if anyone saw that movie when they were a kid. That, that movie actually like scared me <laughs> as a kid. But anyway, I really liked that theme of the house being a character and I thought that was interesting but really everything else about the story just kind of fell flat for me. I didn't really like it um, and yeah, that's really it. The last question is book you read that you would reread and I have to say I would reread a lot on this list honestly. Anything by Ali Hazelwood, Emily Henry, I read Funny Story by Emily Henry. Um, I, yeah, there's a lot that I would reread, but I think if I was picking one, um, just like straight up, I would have to say Finding Me by Viola Davis. This memoir was so good. It actually made me cry out loud and, or cry out loud. It made me cry. I'm not sure how you'd say that, but anyway, it did make me cry. It gave me a visceral reaction because her writing was just so powerful and I actually listened to it. And I swear when authors read their own work, it just makes it 10 times better because they know the inflection that they're intending and you can hear the emotion in their voices. But anyway, yeah, I would definitely reread this. Questions are reflecting and then making goals for the next reading year. So question number 19 is reading goal reflection and my 2024 reading goal. 
So as of today, my reading goal I have accomplished and I initially had set it to 24 books and then 50 and then 75 and then now 100 and I just hit my 100th book today earlier this morning. So I did accomplish it and I did change it four times or three times, four times. It's been, it's been four different things, I guess. And I think next year for question number 20, it's, um, what are, what am I prioritizing in 2025? Well, first, I think my reading goal, I think I might just set it at 100. I feel a little scared to do that. Maybe I'll set it at 75, just like right out the gate. I think I'm going to set it to 75. And my, my main priority is to finish my physical TBR. I feel like that's a bit unreasonable to finish all of it. So I'm going to say 70% of it I would really like to be done with. I have 107 books on my shelf right now and on my physical TBR and I'm pretty sure 70% is like 70 books or something like that. 75 books and I read tw 26 more books or 25 more books than that this year at this point which I'll probably read a few more. So if I can just read that many but have it come from the shelf that would be Anyways guys, that is the end of the bookness and that is all the 20 questions for um, the end of the year book tag. And yeah, I'm so excited. This is my third year doing bookness and it's just always so much fun and it's really challenging and it's so crazy to think like, oh, if I really wanted to, I could post every day, but that's not happening. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know um, what you guys want to see in the new year, book related content wise. And I will see you guys very soon. Peace and love. Bye, guys.